Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philip Interventions. Today I want to talk about uh, banking. Uh, we've talked about this numerous times before. But uh, I've seen uh, what's happening is I'm getting an age group now from 35 to 39 or 40, and so I made a lot of questions. Of course, a lot of the, a lot of the guys that are coming and are retiring here, and even the young guys that are retiring here, ask the same questions. How do I open up a bank account? What's the process? How do I get a driver's license? What's the best way to get a driver's license? How do I take care of banking? So all these three topics are very important to someone coming here. Now back in the day, whenever I first came here, you had to let the bank know where you're going. And because they had a difference, they didn't have a lot of the chips, was not in the cards at that time. So you had to let the bank know so they could actually set you up for that thing. Nowadays, since they have a chip in the card, they pretty well know what's going on and where you're at anyway. So what they do is, is uh, you can use that card anywhere in the world. Now a lot of guys in the past that they really hadn't had a problem with it. Uh, the bank would just set it up as uh, worldwide because they travel for different country, countries like Africa, Asia, uh, you know, and then go into South America and things like that. So they would just open their card up for that. So when the guys traveled, if they needed it, not always it's going to work uh, because the cards themselves sometimes can be a hassle, even here. Uh, you can use your card to pay for groceries. You can use your card to pay for something at Handyman. But it's not always going to work because the way the system is set up, uh, there's fees involved. Some don't get hit with the fees. Some do get hit with the fees just by using your card. Make sure you keep an eye on that because there has been known if you're at Handyman and you charge something and say it's $10, they may charge you a fee of 3 to $5. Let's keep an eye on your statement. And don't think it's not going to happen. In some cases, it happens all the time. Some cases, you may not get a hit and then until you start looking at the receipt and looking at your statement. But what it is, is when you go to the bank, you can take your regular card, your Visa or MasterCard, go to the bank, and you pull money out here just about anywhere, as long as it has a Visa or MasterCard logo. And it, it varies on the cost on use of that card. Then you charge about 5 bucks. <clears throat> but I suggest that you get a card through Swab, or Wells Fargo, uh, Capital One has one, that's one that I use. Uh, the fees are actually uh, null and void. So what they do is, if the bank charges me $2.50, no, $5, 250 peso, for a transaction, whether I get $1 or $100 out of the bank, they will take that money, uh, They will you get charged $5. So what Capital One, Wells Fargo, Schwab, and all these other big companies do is they give you that credit goes back to you. So they just credit your account. So I don't pay for fees. A lot of guys complain. They say, well, I never paid for fees. Well, it's congratulations. And it depends on the card. A lot of credit unions charge no fees on the credit cards. Another great thing about uh, USA credit cards is they pretty well are taken anywhere. And if you need to book a ticket online, you can do that easily, as you know. If you're not getting the response that you need, you can always, how can I say, you can always change your VPN. Just go online, get a VPN low, uh, for USA, and then you can actually make your purchases and it's easier. But make sure you keep an eye on what VPN you use. If you need to log back in to the PAL or whatever. <clears throat> What's happening is a lot of the websites, a lot of things are, are saying $3.99, fly to Asia from USA. $4.99 flying for USA to Manila. But what it is is if you're here flying back it's cheap but there flying here it's expensive. So change your VPN to Asia or something like that. Get a VPN at your house, change it to Asia, purchase your tickets, keep it up with, keep up with that VPN and, and where it's located whether it's like uh, New Jersey or wherever it's at right and keep up with it because you may need it later on. Now, you still need what they call an onward ticket. I have a link on mine. You still need an onward ticket for round trip tickets. Uh, so, for example, if you're uh, coming here on a tourist, uh, you'll need to show entry back out. Uh, because if you're coming here to get married, you need to show that you're leaving again. So, there's an onward ticket you pay. It's like 10, 20 bucks. And it saves you from buying a ticket. You get copies of it. And you get copies of the day of, of and all that stuff. So, it really helps you out. <clears throat> but back to banking. Banking itself is something that can be quite frustrating sometimes. You do really need to keep an eye on your cards, keep an eye on the fees, keep an eye on all that because what had happened, 
uh, sometimes either sneak in a fee that you don't really know about um, at some banks. For example, it's five dollars. Some banks charge an additional five dollars. So make sure you take a look at that and make sure you look at your statement. Uh, Ruth pulled money out of the bank, a different bank one time, and they charged five dollars and five dollars. So I had to call Wells Fargo uh, in Capital One, we used at that time, and tell them, hey, just deduct that. Oh yeah, we did. Well, done, you know. So good thing about it is if you get a good good bank and good setup, the bank uh, the banking system um, works well here. But you're going to find sometimes that you can get in some problems. Say, for instance, you want to go get a driver's license. What in the world do you do? Get a driver's license. You go down to the uh, LTO. You give them your driver's license, a valid driver's license. It's valid, and you you can get a license for the Philippines. And you just exchange, not exchange. They just show that you can drive. And there is an international driver's license. You pay like 40 bucks a year, 50 bucks a year. I think it's gone up a little bit. And you can come here and drive here internationally, any country, one year, and you just pay a fee, and it's an additional thing. You can get it through AAA. The, the thing about it is it just gives you availability. If you don't want to get a drive, maybe you don't like it here. Maybe it's the first time coming here, but you need to drive your bike and you need to drive a car, someone else's car. Maybe you're going to rent a car, right? Well, they won't let you rent a car unless you have a driver's license. So the easy way to do that, just get, a, uh, get the international driver's license and you can come here and you drive any, anytime you want. Your license is good for up to one year. After you're here for a period of time, 90 days or so, you can actually go get a driver's license on your own. Now I have to admit, uh, it's not that hard to get it, but some people are saying they have a hard time getting uh, uh, the card. So it depends on where you're at and where you live and who's behind the desk and who's doing that duty that day, you know? Another good thing is about banking is, is I want to tell you this, how hard is it to open up a bank account? Well, sometimes people say, hey, now I had a tourist visa for three years, okay? And it just didn't do permanent because we're planning to go back to the States. I didn't want to deal with a permanent, so much hassle. It did take me four years to get my permanent though because of COVID. But it was just so much hassle for me to get all the paperwork and go through all the interviews and things like that. I mean, Ruth and I went through four interviews. Nowadays, they claim it's just one interview or so and you're done. Two interviews, you're done. Really simple. You pay four, five, six hundred dollars and you're set, depending on what place you go for your visa. But in banking, for example, you need to have some type of permanent visa. Some banks will open you up on a tourist visa. There's guys that swear to me they got a bank account on a tourist visa. Congratulations. But where I'm at locally here, and some of the guys are telling me, there's no way in the world. We needed a, you need a permit. SRV, 13A, something like that, a military visa, something, or medical visa. There's so many visas, guys. There's there's a hundred. There's a hundred visas. You can actually get a medical visa here, too, and it's reduced rate. So if you're a handicapped or in a wheelchair, I would look at that. Uh, military visa is like $1,500 deposit if you're in the military. It's very inexpensive that way. If you're going to go to the SRV, there's a couple ways you can go. It's you deposit money in the bank account and uh, X amount of dollars, ten or twenty thousand dollars, depending on what visa you're going after, and you can actually use those funds to purchase land and or house, and it's deductible. You get credit. You get a lot of credit. So the 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 thing of it is, if you want to open a bank account, have your wife open up a bank account. That's what I did. It's the easiest way. You transfer money. A company called Wise. W-I-S-E is the link in my description. Great company. You want to transfer money. Here's an example. I transferred money from point A to point B. All right? Three cents. Uh, yeah, three cents. Three cents. And the value of the money was transferred was $1,000, say. Three cents. And it's there in... Uh, within 10 seconds. It's there within 10 seconds. So make sure you try Wise. It used to be uh, TransferWise, some one of those companies. But anyway, they changed it up. Great program. I think uh, uh, it was owned by UK. It may still be owned by a UK company, but they're great. They're easy to deal with. All you need is the you know, SWIFT codes and all that stuff to get involved, get it situated. But you have all that information, the, the, the actual name. You need to have make sure you spell their name correctly. 
uh, because it's really going to mess it up. But uh, you can have money in, I, I'm not kidding you, it's 10 seconds. And it's, it's deducted out of the bank because these days it's, it's really fast. I could not believe it. So if you're sending money, it's, and it's cost me three cents. Some guys are saying, oh, you can do it for $5 and $10 and $20 and $80 and all that stuff. Fine. They do whatever you want, but I found that Wise was the best. I went through all of them, you know, like Bud Brown and all of us had. The old timers has been here for eight, nine, ten years. Uh, Bud's here 12 years, and he was telling me, hey, man, I got kicked out of, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, Western Union. I couldn't even think of the name. Money Ground. I send value. All those, all those companies uh, were blacklisted. They won't let you send because different IP addresses because of the trouble they had here in the Philippines. It's, it's blacklisted country. Now, a lot of guys say they don't have problems in Western Union and things like that, but the fees are high, very expensive fees. I, I, I could have saved, I, I forget, I don't, probably thousands of dollars I could have saved by just, by just not using Western Union. Just use bank to bank. Now, I can transfer money from my bank to Roos Bank, no problem. I can transfer money to someone in Africa, India, uh, wherever, any 20 bucks, 100 bucks, no worries, and it's there within two minutes. Less, actually, 10 seconds. I have a friend in India. I sent $30, and it was there in uh, five seconds. Five seconds from the time I hit the button. He's already in his account. He does circle like this. Boom. And another circle and then another circle there done it's like that it's really fast so take a look at those guys so anyway you can open up a bank account and just make sure you have all the paperwork with you you're going to ask for all your IDs uh, marriage certificate and all that stuff to make sure you do that so hopefully I answered a lot of the guys questions today I tried to go through it if I miss some just leave it in the comments and I can easily come back to it and explain all the detail in the comments and uh, hopefully you guys like this video coming up, and I'll see you guys next time.